do you deal with nuptial agreements from other countries? So if the couple relocate to Latvia and they have um, a nuptial agreement in England, um, what would your what would the, be the attitude of your court in Latvia if they divorce? Would you ignore it or would you try to uphold it? I will say the most popular uh, answer of the lawyers. Uh, it depends. Uh, it really depends. And uh, the Supreme Court of Latvia has not ruled yet so far uh, on the um, recognition of nuptial agreements concluded abroad. But let me explain. Uh, so the um, there are two, two, uh, two criteria which are specific to Latvia, and this is public credibility of nuptial agreements and uh, clarity of contents, understandability of the contents. And I would say that if the nuptial agreement, which is in, concluded abroad, if it meets these two criteria, so public credibility, which means registered somewhere publicly, and if the contents uh, was uh, explained to the parties, then most probably we could you know, come to the conclusion that such, pub, uh, such nuptial agreement would be in force of, also in Latvia. But if there is a lack of either one or both of those criteria, then most probably this nuptial agreement will not be accepted. But there is no clear answer from the uh, case law, neither uh, a thing could be uh, interpreted from the law. Yeah. And, uh, and how, how's it going uh, Spain, Diana? Well, in Spain, we, yes, um, we would respect a nuptial agreement from other countries as long as the nuptial agreement is drafted according to the formalities of the country where it was signed. And as long as it does not include any law, unlawful provision or it, is, it's not, it doesn't go against the general principle of equality between the spouses in Spain, we sometimes we find uh, an optional agreement from Islamic countries, Morocco mainly. And in that case, yes, if it goes against the international public order and it will be examined by the courts. And in that case, it will not be respected. But as long as it's not, I mean, it does not go against the general principle of equality and it, the, all the, uh, the formalities of the country where it has been signed as they have been complied, then we would respect it. We have to, I have to add that a Spanish notary in Spain is an authority, can be an authority. We are one of the few countries um, in, in international law in the UA, yes, in Europe, that the Spanish notaries are authorities. They can uh, divorce, they can marry, Yes, they can even in, in the inheritances, they can, there is the, uh, you can go to court if you don't agree, if there is a disagreement between the beneficiaries, between inheritors, but if there is an agreement, the only way is to go to a notary. So really the notary is an authority and it is recognized in Europe as an authority. So it's a little bit different from or the notaries, yes. But yes, as long as it does not go against the international public order, we will respect them. Another thing is what Dana said. Well, it depends if, sometimes there is, it depends. But as a general rule, yes, it will be respected. I mean, the reality, I suppose, is it depends which country you're talking about, doesn't it? If it's a country that resonates with your own jurisdiction's idea of fairness, that's fine. If it's way off the mark, then you might find you'd interfere, perhaps. No, fairness, no. It's international public order. Right. No. Okay. Uh, and that will be the that will be true in Latvia as well. More more about international public order than fairness. Well, theoretically, it should go hand in hand, but uh, the public order would be a decisive rule, probably. Yes, if it would be uh, absolutely contrary to the public order of Latvia, then we would not uh, accept uh, such a nuptial agreement. Uh, and how about you, Lisa? Um, quite different, I think. Um, if it's mandatory to get to sign um, an agreement prior to getting married, um, and they have relatively standard terms, so you know non-variable, I'm thinking that 
I, I'm almost certain that that wouldn't be enforced in Canada. So for instance, uh, what Dana describes in Latvia, how it's all very standard and you just get into it. I I'm, I'm, would advise a client that that would not be applicable here, um, particularly if all of the assets had been gained and resided in British Columbia. Now, it, it's a different matter in terms of if you have some assets in one jurisdiction and some in the other. Um, and I would be phoning Dana and saying, look, what do we do with the Latvian assets? How would those happen? Here's what I think would happen with the British Columbia assets. If it's an agreement that has been negotiated full disclosure values, uh, legal advice signed in front of lawyers. I think the courts are going to give quite a lot of deference to that, um, provided that it is within the K British Columbia version of FAIR. Um, and, you know, FAIR being every lawyer's four-letter word, because it's so difficult to, uh, to define. Um, I would be advising clients, uh, if they have significant prenuptial or marriage agreements um, due to interfamily wealth or jurisdictional um, assets that they must have any agreement drafted in British Columbia reviewed in their new jurisdiction and either amended um, if it is easy enough to just do um, a one page agreement saying, you know, we acknowledge the terms of this agreement in British Columbia and wish it to apply in Spain, then there's that or more likely more likely, you know, we acknowledge the terms of this agreement negotiated in Spain and wish for these provisions to apply to us fully in, in Canada certificates of independent legal advice, I think that, you know, that is much more um, I think a court is going to defer to a party's desires at that point because it's then very clear that they've thought of these issues and have reviewed them and want to be bound by it. Well, I think that's probably the conclusion that we reach at the end of this discussion. And thank you so much for coming. Is that mirror agreements in different jurisdictions are absolutely essential, aren't they? We can't make any assumptions at all. Um, no matter how close we might feel to another jurisdiction, it could be radically different. And um, it's good to know that if I have any problems in Latvia, in Spain and British Columbia, I know exactly where to come. And um, it's really great to see you all. And thank you so much for your time.